What is up guys, Ben Allen back again with another individual skills validation episode. We're gonna be going over the surgical trike, right? This is one of the skills you can be tested on for your individual skills validation in 68 Whiskey AIT. So uh, we're gonna be going over it with our demonstrator, Sergeant Zuniga, you guys know him, you love him. He's been in every single video so far. Again, like this video, if you take anything away from it, comment down below what you're most excited for about being a medic, and also subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. It really, really helps us out. But without further ado, let's get to it. Alright guys, so here we are going to be reading off through the steps. As I read them, he's going to perform that individual step just to give you guys a general idea of what to expect. But again, listen to your instructors. They know how they're going to grade it, so take this with a grain of salt. So step one, take BSI. Perfect. Next, he's going to identify the crike membrane between the cricoid and the thyroid cartilages. So he's located his, uh, his site. If you want to go ahead and describe how to find that, go ahead. So whenever you look at the, uh, the cricoid membrane, okay, you're going to look for the Adam's apple and you're going to start going down, right? You're going to notice a little dip and then it's going to come back up. That little dip is where we're going to be cutting into. So right here, right, you go down, I feel this dip and then you know, right here is going to come back up so i'm going to be cutting right into here that's where the tubes going to be going to sweet so now that we've done that he's going to clean the site with an alcohol wipe sweet there he's, there he goes and now he's going to stabilize the larynx with a non-dominant hand confirm landmarks with dominant index finger right so pretty you're going to reconfirm a lot guys and now that he's reconfirmed he's going to turn scalpel horizontally all right my bad um, so now that he's uh, verified, guys, he's going to make a one inch vertical incision through the skin over the membrane, right? So bam, he's going in, sweet. Now that he's got his sight there, he's going to reconfirm the sight with his finger. All right, sweet, he's located his sight. And now he's going to turn the scalpel horizontally and poke through the actual crike membrane, making a half inch incision as you can see, right? And he has a little tip that you guys can follow without, but by leaving the scalpel in and getting the hook. So feel free to tell him. Okay, so you're, so you're gonna leave the scalpel in, right? This confirms the uh, the area that you're, you're gonna be going into. A lot of times uh, you're gonna notice for AIT that a lot of people are going to miss or they'll get the cricoid membrane, but whenever they go to put the actual tube in, they're gonna go above it and it's not gonna go into the lungs at all. It's not, and you're gonna be pumping air into their chest, mm -hmm. uh, like right between their skin and their muscles. Yep. So now that he's done that, he's going to insert the tray cook and elevate the crike cartilage. So there, it's in. Again, bear with us; these mannequins are pretty old. So yeah, now that he's got the hook in, guys, he's going to insert the end of the tube uh, fully into the trachea and direct towards the lung. He's going to remove the obturator if applicable. If using an endotracheal tube, he's going to insert one fourth to one inch inch beyond the cuff. So there you go. He's going to remove it. Bam, there we go. And now that he's got that in there, he's going to inflate the cuff with 10 milliliters of air. So bam, it is inflated, right? And now he's going to direct his CLS to ventilate the casualty twice with the BVM. So I'll go ahead and do that for him. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here, right? And I'm going to do it twice while he auscultates to make sure that he's got the actual tube placement. So bam. As you can see, we got it, it's filling up with air. So he's confirmed that he does have the proper placement. The evaluator will then say, if there is equal rise and fall of the chest, respond with, you hear breath sounds in all fields. So you hear breath sounds in all fields. If not, you would have to reconfirm that placement, guys. So now that I've done that, you can take this off, I believe it. Oh, uh, it's just to leave it actually. Okay, know. so with that being said, guys, we're gonna go ahead and move on. So he will assess the casualty for spontaneous representation respirations for 10 seconds so go ahead and assess okay. One, two, all right sweet and then i will the evaluator will say when would you assist a casualty with ventilations if they're uh the respirations were below eight or above 30 or if their pul their pulse oximetry is below 90 percent. exactly right so be sure for that so now while he's listening for that the evaluator is going to go ahead and say you hear um, either, you know, nine respirations, right? right so yeah. if I hear nine respirations, then I'm just gonna leave him be. He can assist him with ventilations, but he does not need to actually breathe for him. Mm -hmm. So now that he's done that, he's gonna apply uh, dressing around the tube. So he would grab any gauze, he would secure the tube, right? Make sure it's good. And then, uh, yeah, he's secured it with tape or these little 
uh, strings that you have around, you can easily just go around the neck and secure them. So that's one of the ways. And guys, continue to reassess, right? Can never go wrong with that. And now that we went through that, I uh, really hope you guys appreciated this video. Uh, this is one of the harder skills, guys, so it really helps if you pay attention, all right? Uh, it's very good to know this. Hopefully this helped you in some way, shape, or form. Again, be sure to like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And uh, yeah, we will see you all in the next one. Later.